Next shot, same problem. After warping the thing, I didn't like that this woman is too close to us and leaves the frame on the left, so I put her a little bit in the past. Now we should delete the parts where I don't want to see white. Then we had two pictures of sky because the picture I had for this shot was too small in size and I just didn't like the way it looked with one image. They move quite believable, but the only thing that is not believable is the absence of windows, putting them back where they belong. Then I extract the whiteness I have in one window so that you can see the sky behind it, then another, and that's it. Again, this is not what architecture looks like at all. I actually like what happens in front of the camera, so the only thing left is to add the sky. We mask the windows, put them back in another layer. I already put the sky behind, so after extracting the whiteness you can see it. If there was nothing behind, that's what you would see. In this shot, there's a little blue you can see behind the window, so that's fine. I just have to warp it. Although I like that the guys on the left are going to pick a train, I don't really like that the lady on the right looks at us at some point. I just sit there and chat and I'll put some more action in the right part of the frame. Yep, the station looks quite alive now. But it's not like I did everything similar in every shot. These five takes just needed some warping, but again, these five were not used in the film. So again, maybe I should have worked on them more so they could be included, I don't know. Okay, now this take where Roman looks for Kate, finds her and waves at the space behind the camera where she supposedly is, needed another kind of adjustment. It's quite shaky, this um, star can maybe show better how shaky this footage is. So I stabilize it and something weird happens. I needed three points in the background which the stabilizing software could use as tracker points because Roman moves and blocks the first one and then the second one gets too blurred to be used as a tracker and I have to use another one. When I did stabilization for this shot I didn't know how to get around the problem of the image jumping around so I positioned it manually, moving the image back into frame when it starts to exit it. Now we just have to scale it into the frame and that's it. By the way, I filmed everything in full HD, but the final film is in a smaller size, so I could position and scale the images down however I wanted the composition to be, which gives flexibility in the editing process, but you lose the quality of full HD. This sequence was a real pain to stabilize, because it's quite shaky and Roman sometimes fills most of the space in the frame. I found 5 points which could be used for stabilization. Now that's what the stabilized footage looks like. You create a virtual camera which follows the footage, so basically you now have an unstabilized video again. Then you have to write an expression or a script for the camera which keeps the video in the frame and stabilizes it as much as you want. Here you can see what happens when I change the first value of the expression. The bigger the number, the more black you see on the edges. So now it's just a matter of scaling the video up. Here I warp it, stabilize it, doing everything I did with the previous sequence, creating the camera, then adding the expression, and that's it. The same applies with this one. And this one. And this one. Now we go out of the station and here's this beautiful narrow alley with a cat incidentally in place, however, not moving when I want it to. I want the cat to move when the guys are further away from the camera. Then I roughly mask the white space where the sky is supposed to be, make it move. 
add some foliage and here it is. Here I stabilize another shaky footage. And another one. Now we have a video with the magnificent Brighton Pavilion, which is ruined by a blank blue sky. I also don't like that this woman and the kid move from the right towards our characters, distracting us with unnecessary information. So I make them travel back in time a bit. And also add some birds flying around in the sky as Roman points at their direction. Now I put the sky behind the pavilion and extract the blue chunk and put something more vivid. In this example I want to show you how a sky replacement process can be a pain to make believable. That's what happened to me when I didn't extract the space I wanted correctly. Here I did a better job with tweaking different parameters and now I just have to place the sky in the right place and blur it a little. This sequence was probably the hardest one to stabilize because it's the most shaky and the only place in the background where I can use to track the motion is blurred and got blocked by Roman several times. Here are the points that I've used and here is the number on the upper right corner indicating how many of them there is. Now it's stabilized footage and the result. And here are some more stabilized sequences from the pier. This piece was probably the most time consuming. Here's an original footage of the exterior of the house I used to live. I used desaturation to have less orange colors and I warped the houses so that they wouldn't look as if they are falling down. Very roughly putting the sky in. Now what I want to have is the camera slowly tracking forwards, however it appears as if the camera is zooming rather than tracking. So I create a virtual camera, make the scene three dimensional and put different layers with a red car, silver car, a front car and a house at different distances from the camera so that when it tracks forward they all scale at a different pace. I also brighten up my house so that it comes out more from other houses. Here's an example of another gentle post work. Here I'm warping the whole image and tinting a bottom left and upper right part of the image so that it wouldn't be so monotone. And this would be the last thing I want to show to you of what I did in the post-production. In the original footage you can barely see anything except from the door. Because I shot it in the early morning and there was not enough light, I took a picture from the same spot during the day, here you see it after I darkened it a little, here you combine the footage with the photo and you get a more believable result, adding some noise to the photo which matches with the noise on the video with the door. I think that most of the job on my project was done in the post-production and that's what really made me like the film much more. I really didn't want to go over the top with special effects so that the people wouldn't notice them, which I think is the best part in doing all this work.